am proud to be from the Antrim, the land I come. Although I labor by the sea, I have followed five and the rum. I have heard the martial tramp of men, I've seen them fight and die. And it's well that I remember when I followed Henry Joy. I'm William Drennan and I am a United Irishman. I'm Theobald with Tongue and I'm a United Irishman. I am Henry Joy McCracken, I am also a United Irishman. You're the United Irishman. Come and we will show you. Ireland in the 18th century was rife with inequality, particularly for Catholics and Presbyterians. During the 1780s, there was many attempts to challenge these inequalities, all of which failed. Therefore, inspired by revolutions in America and France, a number of middle-class radical Presbyterians got together in Belfast on the 14th of October 1791. It was at this meeting that the United Irishmen were formed. They were, in essence, the first Irish Republicans. We passed three resolutions at our first meeting. That the weight of the English influence in the government of this country is so great as to require a cordial government among all the people of Ireland to maintain a balance which is essential in the preservation of our liberties and the extension of our commerce. That the sole constitutional mode by which this influence can be opposed is by the complete and radical reform of the people in Parliament. Our third resolution is that no reform is just which does not include Irishmen of every religious persuasion. What's all that there mean? Forgive me, young man. I will try to simplify our resolutions. You see, in our time there was a parliament for the whole of Ireland, and the English had too much influence over the decisions that were made. Also, the Irish parliament was not representative of the people. For example, today, I believe you elect your own politicians. In our day, politicians were appointed by the upper classes. Uh, it was also true that no Catholic could represent people. It was very exclusive. Uh, we were here to resolve to radically change that situation by encouraging people all over Ireland who want to change to come together to stand up for the rights of all the people of Ireland. I can't believe all this started in Belfast. If you're interested, we can look at other significant places in Belfast. Okay, let's go. In December of 1796, the United Irishmen came the nearest they would to victory when 15,000 French troops arrived off Bantry Bay. Only the bad weather and poor seamanship of the Jacobean sailors prevented the landing and saved Britain from defeat. After Bantry Bay, Irish society was bitterly polarised as loyalists flocked to join the British Army and the United Irishmen's numbers swelled massively. By the spring of 1798, the campaign of British terror was destroying the United Irish Men Organisation and many of the leaders have been arrested. The remaining leaders felt forced to call an immediate rising before French aid would arrive. The date was set for May 23rd. A series of factors undermined the rising in Dublin. However, it sparked major risings in Waxford in the south and Antrim and down in the north. These saw large-scale battles in which tens of thousands participated. Elsewhere, there were minor skirmishes, particularly around Dublin. After the defeat of the main risings, a small French army landed on the west coast of Ireland at Killala on August the 22nd. Although there was almost no revolutionary organisation in that area, thousands flocked to join them and the subsequent army succeeded in inflicting one major defeat on the British. By the autumn, the rebellion had been defeated. Tens of thousands were dead, and a reign of terror had spread over the country.
Henry Joy McCracken was born on the 31st of August 1767. He was a cotton manufacturer and an industrialist, Presbyterian, radical Irishman and a founding member of the Society of the United Irishmen. This is where I lived and ironically it's only yards from where I was murdered as you will soon see. Henry became interested in radical politics from an early age and joined the Society of the United Irishmen, which quickly made him a target of the authorities. He regularly travelled throughout the country, using his business as a cover for organising other United Irish societies. McCracken formulated a plan for all small towns in Antrim to be seized, then for rebels to converge upon Antrim town on June 7th where the country's magistrates were to hold a crisis meeting. Although the plan met initial success and McCracken led the rebels in the attack on Antrim, they were defeated and his army melted away. Although McCracken initially escaped, a chance encounter with men who recognised him from his cotton business led to his arrest. Although offered clemency if he testified against other United Irishmen leaders, McCracken refused to turn on his comrades. He was court-martialed and hanged at Corn Market, Belfast, July 17, 1798. In Belfast town, they built that tree and the red bulls mustered there. I saw them come as the beats of the drum rolled down. It is here I stood on the morning of the 17th of July, 1798 a rebel prisoner in my own town. This is the land that my great-grandfather gave to the city of Belfast. It was here that my poor sister Mary Ann watched me hang. This is my final resting place. It is here I will leave you to find out more about my good friend and comrade William Drennan. Who's William Drennan? I think we just passed his grave. It's up there. Come on, we'll go and see. William Drennan was born in Belfast in 1754. William is son to Reverend Thomas Drennan, minister of Belfast First Presbyterian Church. Drennan was heavily influenced by his father, whose religion conviction served as a foundation for his own radical political ideas. William Drennan is credited for the writing the original prospectus of the United Irishmen in 1791. He was a keen poet also. He died in 1820 and showed his non-sectarian outlook was unchanged by stipulating that his coffin be carried by an equal number of Catholics and Protestants, with clergy from different denominations in attendance. Nor one feel of vengeance presumed to defend the cause or the men of the Emerald Day. Did you know that today Ireland is known all over the world as the Emerald Isle because of your poem? Mary Ann McCracken was born in Belfast on the 8th of July 1770. She was the sister of the Irish rebel Henry Joy McCracken. She was also a member of the United Irishmen. My God, who's that? My name is Mary Ann McCracken. I believe you have met my brother Harry. Oh sorry, you would know him as Henry. I'm his younger sister. After my brother was murdered, I dedicated the rest of my life to helping the poor of Belfast. I moved into the poor house, which is just over there. What was your role? Young people today are lucky in that they have so many more rights than children in my time. One successful campaign that I fought was to abolish the use of chimney boys in chimney sweeping. This is where young children were sent up chimneys in the old Victorian houses with a rope tied around their waists. If they got stuck, their ropes were pulled and in most cases the children fell to their deaths. In some cases, they fell into fires that were still lit. This campaign was first won in Belfast and then I fought to get it stopped in England, Scotland and Wales also. That's amazing. You're a true inspiration. You're a great role model for us. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Ann McCracken died on July 26th, 
1866 at the age of 96 years. Our Joel Baker, I'm going to ask him about these people. Oh, I come on. Joe, we just bumped into the United Irishmen. Will you tell us a bit about them? Well, no doubt there's, there's quite a few of them in here, but one of the things I'll show you is that one of the last one, and this man here is William Steele Dixon. And he was a minister, his full title was the Reverend William Steele Dixon. And there's a couple of things very important for young people today. And that is, he was a Presbyterian minister. And all the United Irishmen and founders of Irish Republicanism were Presbyterians. And when you look at the ideals that they had, the ideals of uniting everybody regardless of who they were, what religion they were, they're ideals that we should remember today because things have changed. Everybody's now multiracial, multicultural. And the United Irishmen are around today, that's what they would be embracing. And I think, as a token of respect to them, we should be doing the same thing. Thanks, Joe. Slander. 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 See you later. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, before we head up to Cave Hill, it's important we are able to bring up with us what we have learned about the United Irishmen, and these are their beliefs. So, who has their own view on liberty and what it means? Um, I think liberty is freedom. About freedom? Yeah. yeah. And what exactly is freedom? Well, like, I would say freedom is... I want, I want the freedom to pursue my life without being discriminated, whether it be just because I'm Catholic or even I'm Protestant or I'm a, just a woman. And who has their own views on equality? What, what does people believe that is? I think that equality is about all of us being equal. Being equal in what sense? Then what do you include? So you're saying you think it's about equal access to education yeah. and health? Yes, thank you. And equal opportunities to jobs regardless of sex and gender, ethnic background, yes. etc. And what exactly is fraternity? Fraternity is about working together and everybody should have equal opportunities, basically. Yeah, I'd say that's a good definition. It would be like Belfast becoming a huge multicultural society today, so it is. And rather than being defeated, the United Irishmen believe that we should all come together as one, because rather than working in small fractions, if you're together, you're stronger. Well, I think that's everything that we need. Let's head up to the KFL again. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Where's my coat? Ach, they're not here. So we'll read out what we think anyway. Yeah, well, liberty first. Liberty is basically freedom. We see life without fear, regardless of religion or background. Equality. And inequality. Having equality opportunities. Equal across healthcare, education. 